Oh, uh, okay, yes. Umra was the one that you got arrested in. Beaten up, arrested, yeah. raped, as, we're called today. <laughs> as, as as Wikipedia mentions. Yeah. So Umrah was 2005. I think so, yeah. Uh, how, we had an altercation um, and that led to, you know. Uh, that's what you're going to call it, an altercation. Yeah. <laughs> it was more than that. Yeah, it, was it was all over the news. Yeah, I'm... It was, you know, the it was. I remember it was. It was quite big. Let's say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it was. It got about. It got out of hand. To be honest with you, uh, and we were very. Oh, you know, we were scared, honestly, because we didn't know what could happen. This and obviously. lucky to come out of that. Yeah, we we thought something's gonna happen, and we were very worried that you know someone can get abducted, someone can get arrested. We had. Uh, issued a court we had issued a case against the uh, the person that was that hit us um because we when we got arrested so uh, 2005 you've gone to umrah you've had a fight in the in the in the, the masjid al-haram so said said uh, juad was uh taken by the police for um reciting dua no he was say, telling the people he said you should didn't insult the shia this was um, in hajr al someone was uh, insulting a shia woman and a boy and he stood up for them. He said, why are you doing this? It's not acceptable. So they took him. They we were sitting did. down. We're just sitting on the side of the haram. And we said, oh, you know, we got to help this guy out. Me and Mustafa Field and all the, the boys rallied around. About 15 of us, 15, 20 of us boys. And the girls, we stayed behind. And he said, don't let them take me into the basement of the mutawa, which is the people that enjoy good and forbid evil. He goes, these are peace people are aggressive. So we said, don't take him. We want the police station instead. The police are, more, you know, the state officials. They're regulated, you know, civilized. We said, fine. So we took him. We, we went with him. We're escorting this, uh, you know, he's been reprimanded. He's been taken. They took him to the cell inside the haram. So we haven't left the vicinity of the haram. He takes, take, he's, he's taken inside. So I wanted to go with him. The police officer said, no, you can't come in. I said, I want to go in because he's, I'm the group leader. And I want to be with the guy. He's, he's under my responsibility. You're 21 here. Probably, yeah. 21. Probably, yeah, yeah. yeah. 21 oh, 20, years old. Yeah. The way you think, no, it will, it's different. Yeah, they're 21 year olds now. It's just different. Each maturity is different. Yeah. So I said, I'm the group leader. I'm going in. Sorry. He goes, no, you can't. He goes, a few minutes will be out. Just wait outside. Yeah, just wait outside. And the room, when I looked inside, it was only three meters length and then maybe two, one meter, 1.5 wide. It wasn't very, mm. although I looked up this way and I could see a cell, a prison cell on top of a stairs staircase that looked a bit weird but anyway we were that side in the space of about a minute all we heard was loud screams like shouting of pain and anguish and like, i said what what is going on and so you rushed in the room i automatically i felt like a urge out of control to see what's going on not that i wanted to go inside and you know but i wanted there's a rush in me maybe it's like you know this is a friend, is someone, ha something help. happened, something urgent, I need to go in and see what's happening. Otherwise, um, you don't know, this guy, is, he could be getting stabbed, you don't know. So, and obviously there's a soldier there at the door, we just, it was all, sub nothing was pre-planned, it was something just, um, and normally I'm a very kind of uh, reserved person, I don't really do things like that, I don't really engage in, in an altercation unless, you know, there's something really dramatic and you know me personally. So, I don't really, not the type of person yeah. to say, you know, let's have a let's have a fight. Yeah, but you you heard someone crying out in pain. I heard something and it just overtook me. And any person in that position was on the same thing. So I moved the soldier out of the way. He was very um, light in his physique. So just <laughs> moved him out of the way. Just moved him out of the way. Shoved him out of the way. <laughs> yeah, and as you do, stormed into the place. And I saw the Sayyid with a huge red mark on his forehead. He is either being punched or they a stapler on his head. Something happened where he's got some kind of he's being physically assaulted and at that time you know had after being reassured in a polite way by the police officers that, that gonna everything come. is gonna be okay we felt betrayed you know felt betrayed that how could you hit him and you don't have no right to hit anybody it doesn't matter what he's done or what he said you cannot hit hit somebody so as we did that as we we rate uh, I, I said how dare you hit this guy what has he done to you we are here your visitors and stuff as this was happening I turned around There was 20 police officers In that place mm. There was like a Huge Royal Rumble Even like a, These Wrestlemania So And there's They were arresting Us And they were trying to 
you know, reprimand us and cuff us. And and at that time... And it turned into a role. role. Yeah, so it became... It was like eight of us and the rest of the guys, they had, you know, they were outside. But in that time, they closed the door and they kept eight people inside the room. Um, and... We were just, um, it was a, it was a, we were outnumbered, but obviously we weren't fighting. We didn't engage, we didn't hit people. You're just Purposely, defending yourself. We're not even that. We're just basically saying, why, are, what are you doing and what right do you have? These guys, they thought, saw it as a threat and they basically became very physical. They start hitting young children. There was this guy who was almost 15 years old, he's been hit. These kids, they were getting beaten up. Honestly, it's, it's shocking. These guys are police officers, big police officers, they're hitting kids. And and at the end, when we were all shouting and screaming and seeing what are you what's going on, <laughs> what's happening? Doesn't make sense. It really is still shocking. And um, this guy, he came and he grabbed me by the by the scruff of the neck. I was wearing dishdasha, white dishdasha. He grabbed my scruff of the neck, and I said, "What are you doing?" And then he picked up his walkie-talkie, you know, the chunky one, and it s- smashed it on my head. And when he did that, I felt like. Basically, it's like that was a tranquilizer. Just sit down, you know, relax. Because it's gonna get, it's gonna get Stereo. physical. The more you raise your voice, it's gonna get out of control. And um, this this police officer came in, who had a distinctive long, long scruffy, uh, black beard, and he was he's wearing army attire, but he also had short length trousers, which which kind of indicates that he's uh, of Wahhabi, you know, kind of, um, um, you know, he follows a Wahhabi school of thought, for well, example. Yeah. Um, because they wear short length trousers but he had long beard very scruffy and he was slightly overweight and he came to each one of us and each one of us is uh, you know it's kind of like being held pinned down by someone he came to one of us he just slapped us right. and yeah and he we says like it. into kuffar jaim bilad al kuffar so you're British because we said we're British and you know that is a kind of a thing to say to get security assurance in Britain <laughs> save yourself it didn't work <laughs> that increased the the veracity of the of the slap I got up, start shouting at him, full, like the loudest voice I can muster. I was like, how dare you? I was like, you know, why are you doing this? And then nothing happened. So basically, we were like, this guy's shirt is ripped, this guy's bleeding from his head, this guy's glasses is broken, he's got cut on his eyes, you know. Um, and by that time, you know, we were, and this is getting serious because, yani, this is uh, very serious, and you've entered the police station. We went, um, police officers came, um, senior guys and said what's going on they took us to a bigger station and they said you know you guys um, you encroached into a police station and that's a federal that's an offence and that's um, two years in prison you went inside a police station we said yeah you guys beat up our senior religious credit cl- cleric so you know he goes no at the, the button the button of a police officer dugmat al shurti that in shilia you're in trouble. You're in trouble. If, if one button is taken yeah, yeah. off his shirt. If a shirt button of a, sh- a button of a shirt of his shirt is ripped of an officer, you have big problems. So we were we said they sorry. They literally scared you. Yeah, too. they tried to scare us, but we lifted, we raised a case. So we wrote down everything, everything that happened and uh, this was this was like eight and p- eight PM, nine PM when we started the altercation. By Fajr, we they took me back to the hotel to get all the passports of everybody. So mm-hmm. I have to go back by myself in the car. Police escort Let's come back to the hotel The rest of the group Are in the hotel now No the hotel Is still in the police station Everyone The eight oh, No no I'm saying Go about the rest of the We group. don't know what's going on with them. You don't know what's They've, they've wow. Figured out their own way They've gone home <laughs> <laughs> We don't know what's going on <laughs> <laughs> The eight people That were arrested They kept us on the station They said Emir you go With the police guy Not by yourself And get your passports So I went to the police To the reception I said give me my passports He said what names This 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 With the police officer With me the eight passports. Eight passports. So I'm not free to do what I want. Mm. And this is Fajr time. People are praying. There's the roads are closed. Yeah, and it's not like a Taqwa hotel when that road down the alley. Mm. We got the passports, came back. Um, and that time, because of the police to the hospital. You've not made any phone calls or you can't make no. any. As soon as we came out of the, the police station, go to the hospital, um, we started calling the. Uh, my that, that time, my dad was a member of parliament in Iraq. And generally, he's involved in politics. So everybody that we, whoever we knew, Call British embassy, person. American embassy, your Iraqi network. embassy, every person we knew, we called. In your network. We just called and said, we're in, we, ha- we said, we're in prison. They're gonna, we're going to get executed. They're going to execute us. We're going to die. Help us. Help us, brother. And that's when it was brought up in the Iraqi parliament. For, there was a press release in the Iraqi yeah. parliament. Um, yeah. And so when we went to, the, in that space of one hour, one and a half, where we got a phone, basically, 
we we they took us to the hospital they checked us up the guy who hit us he came bandaged up he said i've got a broken hand he's got a, a broken hand i'm finished and he so just put scratches his hands here all bleeding he goes you guys did sort of the officer so the guy you hit us he's like nah worst. it's your fault you did it so by the time we came back to the police station we saw a huge gmc outside the police station massive you know, white beautiful clean yes. clean so I walked in there's a massive guy standing there wearing a white robe very clean he had gold cufflinks and like a silver glasses but he looked he looked higher up it's not the usual guys we're seeing in the area and he says come into the office so he took us into the office ac he brought us drinks of water he sat us down he goes Trying on to behalf of the prince of jeddah mecca and medina flan filtan and madrash you know whatever his name is this guy would like to apologize for you for your for your for your grievances and for your problems and we you're free to go with to you are our friends and, and we my love son, you you're not far anymore yeah you guys are good guys we love you thank you for coming i appreciate yeah, it like kiss we'll and then off. we said we want to go home now it's like go home if you're free to go but this is your this is your country these are just these are indians who did this to you we mistake apolog- happened a mistake happened oh, a bit. so we're like you know what this is go home let's go to sleep I'm so yeah <laughs> that's your watch just doesn't understand yeah i don't blame the watch for not understanding that yeah if, uh, yeah this guy was talks to me for some reason anyway um we went home really and um uh the american embassy police drew it out immediately they said we don't we can't trust risk it, it yeah. so we were left with no s- cleric s- cleric and then we just spent the last four days alone but uh, the girls were worried because they thought something's gonna happen to them yeah that's not the the guys were worried you just want to come back home now we want to come back home but we can't people paid for the tickets you know the, they paid for the umrah trip and we and so i said the next day i said whoever wants to go umrah let's go so i took let's a group of home. six seven people and we went to masjid shajara and no the miqat outside um yeah no masjid shajara miqat is outside mecca we did the ahram, ahram came back did our amal came back and we saw the guy that but it's important We have nothing to, you know, we've got nothing to hide, nothing to worry about. But there was a sense of fear. There was a fear, anxiety, yeah, fear. Sure. That time, someone contacted the BBC and said, Shia Muslims, they've been, been, targeted. been targeted and the BBC run the story and they started to pick up, gain momentum. Yeah, this was, BBC you know, the people, the people that we spoke to said, look, let's escalate it. I said, guys, we're still in this country, man. If something let's happens go to back us, home, yeah. Let's go back home. Goes, no, we have to do it now. Otherwise, I said, we're still here. What if something happens to us? They're like, don't worry, we'll be safe. So we we did nothing but people there they started relaying the story they started narrating the concept the story the the news article and then it started to pick up traction. We don't know what's going on we just get messages people are messaging us people are calling us from Iraq you know this guy says don't worry we're with you but you know I heard from the whoever whoever had a grievance with Saudi Arabia we became the, their role model yani we come you know go fight I said we just want to go home. There's a funny story in the airport. So we called the embassy. We called the British embassy we want to leave tomorrow is our names on the band list because because we've raised the case we're not allowed to leave the country so yeah you already so we have launched a case against flan x you can't leave the country if you have a case against somebody not allowed to leave 